How's it going everyone? This is Tricks from Meta Smash, and I want to quickly let you guys know that I'm going to be hosting a Nail the Trick Combo Mastery Seminar. There's going to be over an hour of Nail the Trick content, so if you're interested, there'll be a link in the description. And with that being said, let's get into the video. Should I be writing down, like, matchup stuff? Should I be just writing down general information, or how, what, what do you do? Well, for me, it's a little bit different because it's not really writing down. It's more so documenting it through videos, but it's kind of the same thing. I would say the things that you want to write down, you want to learn about yourself first as far as your character. And if you feel like you know your character, you might want to write down very niche combos for different types of characters that you're fighting. And you could group them by heavyweight, fast faller, floaty character, small character, frame one escape option characters, whatever you want. Because you're going to have different combos against all these different types of characters. For Falco, fast faller characters, up throw is way better. For floaty characters, down throw is way better so it's like okay if i know that i have to not necessarily prove it to myself but like why do i think that it's like well at high per or zero at zero percent i guess a floaty character if i do an up throw and try and get an active pop combo they can just get out of it basically for free because they don't fall fast enough with me to get the drag down so i have to go for something yeah. else that makes sense so that would be something that i'd write down as far as writing out the exact combo you could do that if it's something that's like new for you and you're trying to actually like figure it out so just to have like as something you can memorize then that's that's totally fine or something you can look at and eventually memorize that's totally fine as far as matchups i'd be going to ultimateframedata.com and looking up the matchups that you frequently fight this is much more applicable if you're doing it in for, for a tournament's sake. So what I mean by that is if you know for a fact that if you go to an offline tournament, one of your bracket demons or one of the best players or someone who's there very, very often happens to play Cloud or Mario or Snake or whatever character, if you know for a fact that you're gonna be fighting them every single week or there's a very high probability of fighting them every single week, you should know what moves are super safe or minus on hit or cross up shield or could break your shield or whatever it might be as far as, I'll say for Cloud, his cross slash, all three hits are minus 25 on shield. However, cross slash one into cross slash two, cross slash two comes out on frame two, which is fast as hell. So although cross slash one is minus 25, if he goes one, two, it's not minus 25. It's only minus 25 if he just does number one and then tries to like grab or shield or something like that. If yeah. I know that it's minus 25, second hits minus 25, third hits minus 25, but it also pushes me away from him. Unless he's point blank, I can't grab him but I can go for a fair as Falco, right? In between, so after he does his second slash, you can go for a fair? Yeah, after slash number two, or after the end of number three, which is like the last three hits. So I think it's, it's like, I think it's five hits altogether. The first one you can do by itself, second one you can do by itself, and when you do the third swing, it does three more swings and it finishes up the, the symbol. This is like kind of off topic because we're not really talking about cloud here, but it's important for me to know that if he does cross slash at all, I shouldn't think to myself, well, this move is just safe. If I drop shield here, I can just die. So I'm just gonna shield and when he finishes it, just roll away because I can't grab. Of course, I can't. there are some situations where I can grab and some situ situations where I can't grab. So if he does it and I'm too far away, then I can't do anything unless I go for fair. I also have to know that limit cross slash is minus 12. Limit cross slash is minus 12, regular cro cross slash is minus 25. If I can do fair out of shield and fair out of shield is frame 10 with my jump squat, that means I can punish both in the same way. So if I ever see the move happen, I can actually punish him for it versus just being like, holy shit, and then just jumping away. So yep. those, those are things that I should no. Uh, also, like his back air being minus three. So if he goes for back air on shield, he's probably going to swing again because he literally can. If I parry it, but his spacing is good, I really can't do anything because it'd be minus six for him. And if I fair out of shield after a parry, it'd still be frame 10, too slow. It's not going to work. So if I parry his back air, don't do anything. <laughs> I really can't. Unless he's right beside me, then maybe I can nair. If I know he's going to go like, let's say, okay. back air into down tilt or back air into dash attack or back air into forward tilt facing me, then I'd have to know, okay, down tilt crosses up shield, forward tilt he's standing in place, but his spacing would still be good. But instant dash attack, if he does that, he lands on my shield. And since he pushes me on, on my shield, I could up smash him for that and potentially kill him and win a game because of that. I should know those types of things and you can write them down. I would, okay. I would say you don't necessarily have to test these things out to know i would say you need to know the frame data that's it's important to know how someone uses a move like if you're talking about aerial drift and perfect spacing then that's also part of it but you should almost assume that if somebody is going to use the move they're going to use it perfectly you should not be you should not be banking on someone to mess up and say this is not safe if they mess up you should say if they if they mess up 
take advantage of the mistake. You're not taking advantage of the move in that situation, you're taking advantage of the fact that they made a mistake. <clears throat> now, or go ahead. something that happens to me quite often is sometimes I'll be shielding and I'll try to roll out of it, but I get hit. Is there vulnerability frames in the beginning of the roll? Yes. I'm not sure how many frames <laughs> it is, but yes. There's a, so when you roll, there's iframes, I guess you could say, in the middle of the roll. But the beginning and the end of the roll you can get hit what's the situation so someone's doing like a well let's just say like limit cross slash on your shield and they're during the cross slash you try and roll away so you can like get out of the cross slash hits or something because if you try and yeah, do that yes example, yeah. yeah if you were to try and do that you would not always get hit because the hit boxes from the cross slash also have to line up with your roll so you could get away yeah. from it by pure luck or you can get hit by pure luck but also knowing that if it's minus 12 on shield you could probably fair out of shield and catch him or back out of shield and catch him then you'd be fine and you can actually get a punish versus like i said just jumping away and letting him abuse a gimmick that's all a gimmick really is a gimmick realistically in smash is when you don't know how to deal with something that someone can consistently do without getting punished i'll say a gimmick that is pretty pretty common would be like game and watch up b into down air over and over and over again i'm sure you've had to fight that before so my fiance plays game and watch and does that consistently <laughs> there you go i know how to deal with it now but uh she'll fight people online and they can't do anything their ass and then <laughs> she'll start losing a bunch and they get mad <laughs> so with game and watch up b down air like uh, up b has iframes on the start and is frame three so you're not doing anything about that but the down air it is i think it is disjointed because it's like a key blade technically but you can still up smash it you can up smash it you can up air it also it has landing leg when he sticks the sword or the, the key into the ground so if you know that they're going to down air don't try and jump and meet them in the middle because you might mess up your timing or they could just not do it and now you put yourself up above them for no reason now let's get down and do some other stuff let the down air come out because he has to land so try and trap the landing and if he happens to go to the to a platform you can now strike the platform if he goes to the ledge you can try and ledge trap if he tries to down air on top of you and abuse the gimmick that hopefully you don't know how to deal with if you shield the down air i mean you know what just let's just just check for the sake of exercise here i'm not sure how unsafe on shield it is but i know it's not safe on shield if he actually like sticks into the ground down is minus 17 okay that's pretty bad so if it's minus 17 that means that if he lands in front of your shield you could up smash him every single time as ness so you would want to dash back and forth whatever run around if he tries to come down on top of you get underneath and shield and you go for that up smash do it every single time if you want to try and space around him when he when he lands into the ground it says uh 22 frames of landing leg so if you get beside him you could also f smash him or go for pk fire provided yep. that your timing is good if he's in pk fire you can get a grab he's super light so you could kill him at probably like 90 with a back throw depending where you are yep. but yeah these are types of things you would want to look at and i can say with regards to frame data it's more than just the on shield and the attack as far as when it comes out you should also know the landing leg on certain moves if a move has like no landing leg at all if they do a rising version of it i'll say like mithra up air or down air zero landing leg you should know if they do this move and i can't catch them before they touch the ground they're gonna shield or they'll be able to dash away or throw something fast before i can actually catch them but if they do a landing down air or a landing up air or a landing fair those are all very unsafe to do they're unsafe on shield but also they have landing leg so you could be dash attacking all of that right or going for pk fire against all of that yeah that's that's just another character that i'm i've gotten better at playing with ness but mm. anybody else i try playing against them i, I don't even know what to do as far as like if they're playing uh pyra and mithra or mostly just mithra mostly just mithra pyra i don't have a problem with pyra usually a lot of people spam with pyra oh yeah side b that's the uh the move bro <laughs> as far as things to write down like so i'll just give you like a i guess a synopsis for myself if i was going to write things down for my local the things i'd be writing down are things about pokemon trainer cloud yoshi luigi snake pikachu bowser ganon probably pyramithra but at least those characters that i just said and it sounds like a, a weird yeah. a weird group of characters but it's like those are the weird group of characters that i have to care about because those are the ones i'm going to see every week who cares about flipping duck hunt if he's not at your local it doesn't matter if you lose to him in elite smash it still doesn't matter just don't play against him like <laughs> end of the day i'm sorry but i'm not sorry don't waste your time yeah right if you're going to locals and let's say the best player at your local plays roy learn about roy you, yeah. should, you should know that his down tilt's minus three and that his jab is minus nine depending on the hit frame five minus nine you should know that he has i frames on his up b on the ground out of shield you should know that his nair i th or no fair is minus 
frame 10, I think it's frame 10 minus four. So if he fares on your shield, you can't do anything. If you parry it, you could probably jab or down tilt. Dancing Blade is anywhere from like minus 32 to like minus 45, somewhere in that range. So if he does, uh, or not Dancing Blade, Double Edge Dance. If he ever does that on your shield or in front of you, huge punish for you. You have to know that. You shouldn't be like, oh my God, and like run away. If you're going up against <clears throat> Double Edge Dance, should you always wait for the last hit? No, you can't. Well, you don't know what the last hit's going to be because he can also stagger his hits very, very slowly. He has yep. control. As long as he doesn't do them so slow that it actually cancels him out of the move, he can do all four hits very, very slow. Or he could do one slow, two fast, then another one slow, or three fast, one slow, and any combination, like, not infinitely, but there's lots of combinations of how he could do that. And also, even the speed, it's not like fast or slow. It's like fast, medium, or slow, or fast-ish. Like, he has tons of control over that. So, if you know that he's going to do something like that, and it's too ambiguous to really tell when he's going to be done with it, just PK fire. <laughs> Free PK fire every single time. And then from there, the next thing I'd be writing down is, if Roy does double edge dance, I'm going to go for an automatic PK fire. At these percents, I can now confirm into either an up smash, or fares, or dash attack, or grab or back air or another pk fire or whatever you want is it going to be for a damage or edge guarding or a kill based on the character that i'm fighting let's say obviously roy roy does not have a great recovery he doesn't have an amazing disadvantage but his disadvantage as far as like juggle situations is much better than his recovery so if i could hit him straight up or off stage i'm going to pick the to send him off stage every single time because i want to be able to gimp him if i can okay. so now you have a game plan around double edge dance if he uses double edge dance i go for pk fire let's say he's at 70 i can go for like a rar backer and send him off stage or if he's on the close side i could possibly go for a back throw and send him off stage that way and then from there try and go for pk thunder and clip him with the with the uh the tail of the pk thunder and just catch him way off stage or you can even try and catch him at the ledge with a uh pk flash and try and get a kill like that if you want to go super deep off stage you could but also have to be careful because he could use his double edge dance again to stall in the air and potentially catch your jump right you should know these things and it's not it's not a surprise as far as you know you know you basically know every character's kit whether or not you know how everything works and how safe or unsafe every, every single move is you've seen them and you know what they kind of do captain falcon if you jump off stage against him and he goes for raptor boost he can spike you and kill you and then also do it again or jump or whatever he wants because he actually made contact with something with captain falcon you don't really want to try and edge guard him from the side or from below him you want to try and get above him and above him he has his command grab with his up b so in order to get away from the command grab part of his up b you have to hit him towards the end of his up b or the very very beginning of the up b same thing for ganon that's another thing too. I'm pretty sure Ganon and his and uh, Captain Falcon's up B are both frame 14. So if you know they're both frame 14, that means you can be pretty close to him before he has to or before he throws it out and catches you off guard. If he throws it out early to try and catch you off guard, then you also have to have some sort of hitbox out there to clank with him. What moves do you have that are longer lasting? Well, you have fair, which lasts pretty long, or you can try and get straight above him, above the actual grab hitbox and go for a spike instead. If you want to stay on stage, you could also go for the yo-yo off the ledge as well too. Of course, when we're edge guarding, yeah. you want down smash to try and send them off stage more horizontally against a character like Roy or Falcon or Cloud or anybody. Down smash is always going to be the best because it sends them super far away. But somebody like Rob wouldn't really care. I maybe want to go with the up smash then. Yeah, I would say for someone like Rob, he's way worse at landing than he is at recovering. His recovery is, I'm not going to say insane, but it's way harder to get out there and really thread the needle versus if he's above you, above the stage, then you can dash around and go wherever you want and essentially catch him because he has to land he's a big body he's relatively floaty and he's gonna have to land above you in some spot like either on a platform or on top of you or put himself on the ledge if you can straight up kill him with a down smash at the ledge then you should do that but also another thing too with rob just as an example he likes to shark the edge of the ledge with up air so if you're charging an up smash or a, a down smash and he, and he flies up to the ledge and goes for up air and hits you out of that then you kind of just wasted your opportunity at a ledge trap so gotcha. so what you'd want to do instead there against rob is bait by standing at the ledge and if he jumps and up airs you either jump above the up air or dash out of the way and then he's going to probably do it again because they always do it at least twice and then he's going to try to recover in which case then you can go for your down smash if you're super fast or you can try and go for a pk fire to try and catch him if he comes past the ledge because a lot of a lot of rods will also like to go for up air up air then grab the ledge and then fair past the ledge same kind of thing it's not just the moves it's also like i said it's how certain players want to use the moves too because if every single player uses them the exact same way then you wouldn't have no you'd, there'd be no such thing as a good player and a bad player
right? If everyone uses them the exact same way. This also boils down to knowing how does your, like, let's say we go back to a local scene. If you have a Rob player at your local scene who, like, like let's say, loves to go for Nair gyro setups, and you know that that starts to work at around, like, 20, and he can just straight up kill you, like, Nair, Z-drop, Nair, Z-drop, side B, and just kill you. If he has Nair, if he has a gyro in his hand, and you're at, like, 10 to 15, don't go anywhere near him, or don't make a mistake anywhere near him, because he will straight up kill you if he's that good. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, little bits of matchup experience for every single character. It's, I, I see what you mean, why it's important to write it down. That way, when you're, you know, at your locals or you're at, you know, a tournament or you can just kind of reference your guide real quick. The thing is, too, is unless your local has like 180 people or something literally insane, there's not that many matchups that you need to know. I feel like me being a coach at this point in time and the amount of players that I've coached, I am tremendously over prepared for competing at, the, at like the locals that I go to because it's not that many people and it's not that many people playing that many different characters right it's, it's pretty yep. common it's like you got yourself like a wolf you got pyramithras and you got snakes and pikachus and stuff like that it's like we don't have a lot of ice climbers and bayos and me sword fighters it's not like weird shit people just show up it's like oh yeah i'm the best incineroar in the world that's gonna be here for no reason like that's not really happening so it's like, i talked about this in the past too like you want to try and learn the common matchups if you don't compete yet just so you're as prepared as you can be the common matchups like i said would be palu wolf snake pyramithra lucina ike maybe just throw in like a weirder one there like a luigi or a game and watch because you'll probably find one of those or like maybe a greninja those are the types of things that you should be prepared for as much as you can but once you go to your local and you see what there actually is and you should be watching other people's sets as well too so you know if they have secondaries or who their main is or any setups that they go for if they really like to go for tech chase like roll reads in if they always ban certain stages or whatever you should be scouting people like it's an nfl combine <laughs> honestly that that's what you want to do